what's up you guys welcome to today's video um i know i've been gone for a while before i say anything i want to let y'all know that this video might be a train wreck just when it comes to like equipment and sound i mean also i'm in it so like <laughs> red flag uh but i live on a really busy street like by a hospital so that sucks like not awesome also, I have no idea what the video is going to look or sound like because I'm not used to filming in this space and like shit is reflective and like <gasps> the new bling, I'll get there. And I'm having issues with my audio, so you're just going to see the microphone and we are where we are. I know no one cares, but as a content creator, I just have to say it because it's going to be bothering me the entire time. Okay, so, um, hi. How y'all doing? Terrible. Really freaking bad. Great. I wanted to sit down and make this video before you guys see the other videos that I have been working on behind the scenes and not posting. Um, and I've just taken a mental health break from YouTube. I've talked a little bit about what has been going on on TikTok. So if you're not following me on TikTok, you're going to be like, what the heck are you talking about? Where have you been? Haven't seen you in two months. And I get it. So bear with me. I'm going to try to remember to put timestamps in. Does YouTube do that automatically now? So the first thing is gonna be like an update. It's probably gonna be rambling and long. I'm going to mention the drama because I know you guys see it. It's kind of unavoidable and it's having a detrimental impact on my life, like my personal life outside of the internet. I'm not just getting a couple of bad comments and an email. No, my friends and family are being doxxed. People are coming to my home. I just had some questions for us. I'm just curious about. What? How you going to do this? People are calling DCFS and Child Protective Services on me. Um, like I said, it was anonymous, but it alleged that um, you were a YouTuber, that um, that's how the person who called it knew all the information. And it's just like a dumpster fire of stress. I'm bad at intros. Let me stop rambling. Let's kick this thing off. <laughs> and, um, what? Why? Like... Y'all have done so much for me. I don't know why I'm sitting in front of it, but it's so beautiful, and I I don't deserve it. There are so many other creators on this app that are just funny and talented and just incredible and kind and just great entertainers and um, educators, and I don't know. I just I don't feel like I deserve that, but I love y'all, and I appreciate it more than I could ever put into words, and... Um, I kind of feel like I've let you down recently, and um, if I haven't articulated how thankful that I am for you guys, I am genuinely sorry. You guys have joined me on this journey from, like, me filming on the floor on my phone, and um, someone had asked me a while back why I deleted the first videos, and they're actually just on private. I'm going to put them back up. I went back and watched them with kinder eyes. You know, and I wish I was more kind to myself back then, but I was hella insecure and I just deleted the videos because I was I was getting some hate on them. And one comment, this is random, this has nothing to do with anything, but I'm wearing a red sweater. Someone said to me, who is this? I can't even say it with a straight face. I know, I know I've said this in live streams over the years, but someone said, who is this Ronald McDonald looking bitch? Just chef's kiss elite like so I've laughed about it for years it's amazing so I'm going to go back and make those first videos public because I don't think there's anything wrong with them I was just I was like really insecure but learning how to talk to a camera it's its own thing it's kind of uncomfortable and awkward at first so that's why the the first videos are gone and the reason why I said that is because throughout this journey you guys have been so patient with me so understanding so kind so supportive um so empathetic to everything that I've gone through. I am grateful beyond words. I believe in the law of attraction and you attract the kind of energy that you put out into the world and I'm very grateful to have such amazing subscribers and followers. So here's a little bit of an update. So I know I've mentioned this before, but I work with a company that manages my Facebook and thank God because there are so many apps and I am just one person. Um, but essentially what they do is they take my YouTube videos and they edit them and reformat them and put them on Facebook while well, they are also going to start implementing my YouTube videos and putting them on my TikTok page for me. So if you're following me on TikTok and you see like some old videos where I'm looking like Ronald McDonald, just skirt past it. <laughs> They've also done that on Spotify and we're doing amazingly well on Spotify and there's going to be new episodes that you guys have never seen here. So it's not just going to be the same stuff that you've already seen on YouTube. It's going to be new stuff and I will link that in the description box down below too. Um, so super exciting. I think I've mentioned this previously but I've also signed with Roku and I will have more details about the launch and all of that stuff very soon. So that's what's happening with that. Uh, in terms of the direction that I want the channel to go, 
I really don't want to share much more of my personal story. I want this channel to focus on other people's stories and the new series that I have been working on, which I'll let y'all know soon. And I kind of just want to move away from my personal story um, just a little bit. I'm definitely going to sprinkle it in there. And, you know, like a lot of my videos, I use my personal experience to shed light on certain things happening. I'm still going to do that. I'm not like rebranding or anything. I'm still going to make the same kind of content. I'm just going to sprinkle in more of this series that I've been working on and um, other people's stories and, you know, using my platform for advocacy and all the things that I've always done. A lot of you guys asked about Mama Kent. So for those of you that don't know, my mom is diagnosed with lung cancer, God, I want to say like a year and a half ago. Um, she just got to ring the chemo and radiation bell, which means that she has completed chemo and radiation. She went in for like her final testing after she was doing immunotherapy. I always get this wrong. You guys will hear from her soon, but she is cancer free. She's in remission. She still has a long ways to go. You guys are going to get to see her soon because she's going to come visit and I'm really excited. She's finally going to get to see the house. Uh, and the kids are getting so big. It's crazy. Like, I don't think I've seen my mom in person for like a year. I know. It's just not easy when you live like 12 hours away and you have two kids and it's just, it's, it's really hard. The kids and I are doing great and um, they just turned 7 and 11. What? I don't know. I don't know how that happened. I blinked. Like, I literally just birthed them yesterday. It's not accurate. Everyone always says when you have kids, it goes by really fast. And you're like, okay, whatever. How, how's a decade going to go by fast? It does. It does. Like, it's crazy. It's summer break, so we're living our best life, and we're doing all this stuff. And I'm, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I am, I'm a little tired because it's the snacks, man. It's the snacks all day, and they're bored, and they're bored, and they want activity after activity. <sighs> if you're a teacher, just start sneaking shit on that list. We're not going to question you because you're going to take our kids for six hours a day. You want a microwave? cool. You want gift certificates, a lot of cash. Just take, just take it, take whatever you want. Start sneaking shit on that list. Cause you guys are undervalued, underpaid, underappreciated. And you can just start putting shit on that list. You know, doesn't even matter what it is. Massage gift certificates. We got you. Just put it, put it on the fucking list. Okay. Okay. I'm going to try to like rapid fire answer, answer some questions for you guys. Um, a lot of you guys are asking me how much time I served all together. And I'm going to wait to answer that because I'm waiting for my sealed records to come back from New York. I know that a lot of people are saying I didn't serve one day in one jail ever in New York. That is not true. Well, the issue is I caught my case as a minor. Even though I did my violations as an adult, I was a minor when I caught my case. My record is sealed. So once I have that paperwork, uh, then I will share it. I'm working on getting page one through however many unredacted unsealed just to show you guys. I told you guys at the beginning of this year, I'm not just going to tell you, I'm going to show you. So I'm waiting for all that paperwork to come back and we'll go over it together. It is really frustrating that, you know, there are content creators that have literally doxxed my friends and family, uh, put out my parents' address, and then they would, then they have come out and said, I edited it, it's taken down, but it's not. And, you know, it, it, it's the most frustrating thing because you can talk about me all you want, but like, don't share my parents' phone number names, addresses. Don't call people that I went to middle school with. Don't, don't like harass people for some tea in a video. Like that's crazy. It's just overstepping so many boundaries and it's not okay. I know how hard it is to receive hate comments and emails and threats and just nasty comments and harassment. It is so fucking hard on your mental health. So please do not send anyone hate. Please don't defend me to these people. A lot of you guys were asking about my ADHD. Um, and how I went about getting that diagnosis and you're questioning a video from 2021 where I worked with a company called Cerebral and I had no idea that they were involved in, um, a couple of class action lawsuits and in the lawsuits, they're alleging that Cerebral, which is a telehealth, um, thing in the lawsuit, it's alleging that they would kind of dole out ADHD medication, like stimulants, like Adderall and people were getting addicted and it was just like a pill mill for Adderall. Um, I posted my sponsored video with Cerebral um, December 3rd, 2021. I mean, obviously I don't have a crystal ball. I can't predict the future. I had no idea that they would be involved in what they're involved in now. Um, and I do have to do more research on it, but that wasn't my experience with Cerebral. I received my diagnosis for ADHD and PTSD and Cerebral put me on Wellbutrin, and that didn't work, and then they put me on Stratera. 
I just, finding the right medication is very difficult actually. It is just really stressful on the mind and it's really hard and it's really frustrating and I wanted to completely give up. And that's not Cerebral's fault, but they didn't prescribe me stimulants. So I went to an outside psychiatrist. It was a struggle for me to even accept the fact that I do have severe ADHD. And um, I didn't want to take medication, but my life had become very hard. Like, it was very, very hard, and I had to accept, like, okay, my recovery journey has changed. I need help. There's nothing wrong with it. As long as I'm taking it as prescribed, we're good, you know? So that's why we started with a non-stimulant medication, um, which was Wellbutrin and then Stratera. And it's also very difficult when you have a dual diagnosis for them to get it right. Then you add in the fact that not only do I have a dual diagnosis, but I have a history of addiction. Well, I have a history of addiction because I have undiagnosed shit that I didn't treat. You know what I mean? Like the chemical is the surface level problem and it's much deeper than that. So I went to one um, in-person psychiatrist, got the same diagnosis, and I was put on Adderall. Um, and it worked great, and I didn't have an issue with it. So I didn't, I didn't really feel comfortable with that doctor, um, but I stopped going because, and this is personal, and like, I don't know, it is what it is. I ended up stopping going to the doctor because there was no point in even going anymore. I felt shamed and judgment anyway, I hated going. Uh, and I'm like, I white knuckled it this long, don't need the medication, it's fine, because my ex was taking it, and it was a obvious trigger for him. I know you guys have questions about me buying Adderall off of the street. That's just not the reality of the situation. Um, I had a friend here or there give me my own doctor prescribed medication just out of the kindness of their heart. Like here, you know, I have a couple extra. You can have them. I'm sorry he took your stuff again. And it was just a friend helping a friend. It wasn't it wasn't this big dramatic, I'm buying drugs off the street like it's been made out to be on the internet. Does that mean it's okay? No. Should I have accepted medication, even if it's my own, from other people? No. Should they have given it to me? No. I have made a lot of mistakes along the way, and that's that's one of them. I feel as though I can say this now, because it has been a year since then. You know, I am under the care of a very good, not the second person, a third psychiatrist. I'm under the care of a very good psychiatrist, and my journey on medication has changed um, because it takes time to find the right medication. And once I left my um, my last relationship and I was out of that, I, I went back to the doctor and it wasn't really that big of a deal. But I felt pressured to share my prescription and I didn't want to because there's such a stigma surrounding stimulant medication. I take it as prescribed when I remember and I'm not abusing it. Just wanted to say that. I also want to say that it's like no one's business what medication you take. And I feel like that has been so invasive and it's been misconstrued and then screamed back at me like she's not being honest in her recovery. Guys, I did not relapse on anything other than alcohol and I am working on it. I did make a mistake a year ago by accepting pills from a friend who saw that I was struggling, who saw that my ex was taking my stuff. And I shouldn't have done that. I am not on drugs. I'm not abusing drugs. No one is coming and going out of my house. A lot of you guys want to talk about um, my kids being around a child abuser. I met Chris. I met TikTok Chris on the internet. Um, this lady was being horrible to a homeless man that was sleeping on a playground. Um, for whatever reason, I forget whose video popped up first, but for whatever reason, we saw each other's comments or videos on that situation. And he's a homeless man that lives in Florida. He's also a veteran that was in Afghanistan. Last year, I was like, hey, we're actually about to be in Florida. If you want to come over, um, I'll make you dinner. You know, you can you can meet my ex. Well, he wasn't my ex then. You can meet my whatever. He came over, I made him dinner, and I saw my ex and him connect so well. And I had never seen my ex talk about his time in the military in any kind of positive or funny way. Um, and they just hit it off, you know? And after I got to know... Chris, he then told me his charge. And I was like, oh, fuck. His story is not mine to share. And I hope that all of this has been said already by him because um, he is working on rebuilding his relationship with his kids. But he used physical discipline like spanking, slapping, swatting, pow pows, whatever word you want to use. He used that to discipline his kids. I don't want to spend a lot of time on the details because I don't want to get it wrong, but it's his story to share. He was honest about what he did. He received probation, completed probation, and he's been in therapy for years now. Um, the child abuse charge was reduced to a domestic. None of that is okay. 
Unfortunately, a lot of us were raised with parents that thought that physical discipline was the way to discipline us. I don't believe in that. I believe in gentle parenting. He now believes in gentle parenting, which is the best outcome, is for a parent to recognize what I'm doing is causing harm and I need to not do that. And I need to learn why I do that. I need to learn that if I slap my kid's hand or I give them spankings or pow pows or whatever cutesy ass word you wanna use, it's because they have triggered something in me where I'm like, pow, and I don't believe in that. I don't believe that. I've never spanked my kids. I've never hit my kids. Chris has never babysat my kids. I've made him dinner once a year, two years in a row. I made him dinner in 2022. I made him dinner in 2023. His flight got all messed up and that's why he was here a couple of months ago. But regardless, I'm very grateful for his experience in a lot, a lot of therapy. And I knew that he wouldn't judge me because he was a, you know, he was a he struggled with alcohol. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't the best person to his wife and kids. And he has, he really has worked a lot on that. I also, um, I am also friends with the officer that arrested me. And one of the police reports, I'm just going to share with you. Hopefully he's okay with this. I'm just going to share with you what he said. Cause we were talking about it and I'm like, when I said I was pregnant that night. Well, that night was 11 years ago. 11 plus years ago, and I was high on meth and pills at 4 a.m., so I don't remember that, but I was being a bitch. I was being a bitch. Not surprising. I was not great when when I was getting arrested. No. So the whole pregnancy thing came about, because, like, I can remember it now. I was asking you guys, what are you guys doing on this side of town this late at night? And you said that you were pregnant, had a craving for something, so that's why you guys went to the come and go, because it was the only thing open that late. Which we get lied to all the time to explain away what people are actually doing. So, no, it was never a conversation where you were like, oh, yeah, I'm so far along pregnant and this and that. No, it was, oh, uh, I'm pregnant, I had craving, so he took me to come and go. I think it was like to get the cereal or something stupid. I can't remember exactly why, but it was that, that was the reason why you guys were where you were at at that time. Yeah, um shut the fuck up when cops ask questions. I probably just said that to try to get out of getting arrested. Like, I don't know. I don't remember it. Um, yeah, anyway. So I wanted to pop in here and add a couple things that I didn't include in this video. The situation with the robbery in New York is I worked at that store and uh, my ex came in, robbed it. I had to give my initial statement uh, to the cops. You know, I said exactly whatever. A dude came in, this is what he was wearing, blah, blah, blah. And they interviewed me a couple of different times. They eventually get a search warrant for my house. Uh, my ex and my friend, they were, um, they weren't at the house at the time. I was there, they went through everything. And the next day I'm taken into custody. Um, so is a few different people, like my ex and a friend and, my um, my cousin who passed away and someone else that passed away. I'm there for what feels like forever. And I've already given them my statement. You know, like the I worked at the store. So my statement was like, dude came in, he was wearing this, he did this. And then I called y'all, what's up? After being there forever and cops trying to play good cop, bad cop and that whole thing, you're supposed to just shut the fuck up and get a lawyer. Um, one of the cops that I've known my whole life uh, he goes, Randy already told us, Jess. Randy already told us that you orchestrated the entire thing. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not new. I'm not playing that, you know, like, no, he didn't. So he's like, okay. He leaves, he comes back in and I'm looking at a sworn statement from him with his signature. I know his signature. I'm sitting there looking at this statement saying, I orchestrated everything. I made him do it. I threatened him to do it. All this stuff. Um, I think he even said that he got the gun from my cousin. And I was just like, you're not gonna do this to me again. You are not gonna do this to me again. He already put me in jail, which apparently I hallucinated. He snitched on me. I was in Sydney when I shouldn't have been in Sydney because I was on the run. So he snitched on me and um, I did a six month violation because of it. I'm working on getting the paperwork. I have to show you, I can't just tell you. Well, I'm looking at that statement and I said, hell no, you're not gonna do this shit to me again. You're not gonna do this to me again. He signed a sworn statement first. He signed a sworn statement first, almost immediately after getting there. And the cops are just hammering me with it, you know? And I'm like, he didn't do that, he didn't do that. He lied on me and said that I orchestrated this entire thing and he was gonna put me in prison. And I was like, hell no, he did that shit. You know, you're gonna sit here and say, I did this shit, fuck you, you did that. 
Now I'm gonna run and go get high. That's exactly what I did. Charges, like robbery charges, grand larceny, false written statement, false police report, because they're like this bitch lying. Um, but they let me go that night and I immediately went on the run because I'm not going to testify. Well, I also knew better than to fight my case from the county jail. It's harder to do that. So I was looking at case law. I was, you know, looking into it a little bit, but I was on the magazine crew. I ended up going to Arkansas. You guys know that story. The reason why I didn't say that in that video is because I'm allowed to keep some details private. Also, most people don't understand how to read legal material. And they think a police report is the end all be all piece of information. When in fact, a police report is one officer's account of what happened. It's not the whole story. My lived experience is going to be more detailed, probably funnier because <laughs> trauma, and it's going to be just better. I never testified against him. He didn't get time because of me. Snitching is when you're in the criminal world and you get arrested. And when you're arrested to try to get out of trouble, you're like, hey, I'll give you my supplier and all my customers. That's snitching because you're snitching on random ass people to try to get yourself out of trouble. That is not what I did. He lied on me and I uno reversed that bitch. This has been such an eye-opening experience for me because I had no idea the rate in which people actually do victim blame. I had no idea how hard it is. And I have been guilty of that too because I sat here a couple years ago and I made fun of Amber Heard. I mean, she like severed the dude's finger off and like she did so many things that were like hella shady, but not all victims of domestic violence react the same, you know? And I feel like this is karma for the way that I reacted to her and that situation. None of us were there. We don't know. We know what it looks like, but we don't know. I've made a lot of mistakes, past, present, and future. I am not perfect. I've never claimed to be perfect. I'm not a liar because I don't put in certain details of certain things across my platforms or in different interviews. Telling my story in 2000 videos and interviews, things are gonna be different in each one. And there are inconsistencies in my story. The flies a paid actor. Um, there are inconsistencies in my story. I will not deny that. I will not dispute that. I can watch these videos back, which I never wanted to do, by the way. And I'm like, oh my God, it sounds like, it sounds like you just said that you were bullied over here, but you're talking about three different times in your life. Like, I had no idea, and it's probably because I don't watch my videos, or try not to. Um, I had no idea back then that I had ADHD. And I look at it now and I'm like, how the f did you not realize that? Um, it's, it's clear as day to me that like this, <laughs> your story takes 47 turns and that's confusing. And I don't know how y'all made it this long because I can't watch my videos. I don't like them. Um, I think they're, my story is complicated. My story has a lot of twists and turns. I do tell it differently sometimes. Uh, I've remembered certain stories after starting the channel because, you know, I don't sit here and talk about myself and my life all the time. There is an entertainment factor to what I do. I do tell stories. I'm a little bit more dramatic in my storytelling because I'm funny, trauma. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, but people that have been through the most shit have the best sense of humor. Are my stories exaggerated? Maybe, maybe. I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and watch them, but it. But are these stories real? Yes, yes they are. And I, I am having such a hard time proving that. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I wanted to add in the Chomo thing too because people were saying that I just like made up this whole thing and I was only charged with, which she shouldn't have this paper, by the way. That came from a CO. It says that my only disciplinaries from ADC was like noise violation, um, like disrespecting a staff member and prohibited articles or something, I don't know. The way that it works in prison is that you're written up for something and this is why Jason's always told me, keep all your paperwork and I'm like, I don't care about that, that's my old life keep all your paperwork. You're originally written up for something and when you're written up for that, what you're written up for originally, that goes to like disciplinary court later. And in disciplinary court, they have to prove that you're guilty or whatever. So you're always guilty. It goes to disciplinary court um, and every place is different, but this is essentially how it works. You're written up for something. If it's a minor disciplinary, you're probably chilling in the unit still, you're not sent to the hole. If it's a major disciplinary, like fighting, um, you're sent to the hole. This was a fight that occurred in the bathroom and I'll get there. Uh, and they originally wrote me up for whatever it says on the thing. And then I went to the hole. I get sent to the hole in Wrightsville. They send me back to McPherson. And when I went to disciplinary court, they gave me an additional 15 days on top of what I was already doing. I was already doing my time in the hole on investigation uh, in Wrightsville. So 
whatever. But the reason why inmates fight in the bathroom is because there's no cameras in there and all they can prove is we're being loud as shit. That's all they can prove. So it's just infuriating. If you haven't been to prison, then that looks like I'm lying, you know? But the way that it works, you're written up, you're sent to disciplinary court, you can plead innocent or guilty, kind of like court in the street, but like, you know, ghetto. Um, then they find you guilty or not guilty and they sentence you to whatever. It could be loss of privileges, um, like going to the going to commissary, going to the store, or like rec yard. Um, it could be in the phone, that's a privilege. It, or it could be time in the hole. So I was already in the hole in Wrightsville. They gave me an additional 15 days when I get back to McPherson. Um, Drama channels like Radiant Brit will get on the internet and perpetuate a narrative that makes you think that right now while you're watching this video of hers that came out a few days ago, she'll make you think that a situation she wasn't present for, doesn't fully understand, and has twisted is currently happening. The internet has taken a very hard, violent turn. Before me and my wife ever met, she was in an marriage for 15 years, and the same stuff that Reese and the people that are siding with Reese are doing as case in use, the same type of shit did to her. And it doesn't have to be physical to be abuse, although Reese absolutely has physically abused her in front of their children. And now a very small group of very small people have sided with him and have decided that they're going to try to make her life miserable, and she's getting through it like a champ. This one's for you, sis. I'm proud of you. Keep going. I don't see most people siding with him. I see people being curious about both sides of the story. That's all I see. So JD can continue to ride her coattails and believe everything she says. That's all good. But um, he, he can't even stick to the facts and acknowledge what Jessica's role in all of this has been, according to her own words and her own content. Every single test with DCF with flying colors while her ex Reese has... No, she hasn't passed anything. They said that their report was unfounded. That has happened three times in a row to me. And by law, DCFS or CPS, whatever you call it in your state, they have to investigate every single call. And everything that's in the allegations are like word for word what these drama channels are saying. And then she really gets into this really strange argument. She said, you know, the whole purpose of me showing what's her face and the other and that other creator, they have names. Why is Uncle Fester living in the house with you? Why is Uncle Fester so heavily involved in these kids' lives when they literally just lost their father? When she has Uncle Fester in her house allegedly doing the same thing and other people running in and out of her house doing the same things that she kicked Reese out for. I have never said personally that she is not a victim of domestic violence. I think that she and Reese were both toxic to one another. That is not something that a victim of domestic violence would do. It goes on a little tangent of how at one point in time everything was in her name and then one day everything was in Reese's name. Um, in, in the blink of an eye. Okay, girl, like, I mean, what is, what value does that even hold? Like, It's very cruel that just in one video, you called him that four times. If I was sitting on YouTube and I made up some horrible thing to call you based on your physical appearance, how would you feel? That's not okay. That is not okay. Anyway, the thing that you don't know about Jason, that man, while flawed, would do anything to keep my kids or me safe, no matter what the situation is. No matter what is going on in his life, if I call him and I need his help with anything, he will be there. He would sacrifice his own life to protect my kids. He went to rehab months ago. Four or five days ago, he posted videos that he should not have posted online. I'm pretty sure he said this, so I think it's okay that I say it. He has bipolar and he gets manic and he's, he's frustrated that so many of you guys are speaking from a place of authority on a situation that you don't know. You don't know me and what I'm going through. You just follow me. Stacey says in one of her videos that strange people are watching my kids and Jason is a snitch because he's on federal probation and um, he was supposed to go do 11 months and he is... Um, He's just committing illegal acts. Again, you don't know him. Stop it. The reason that people say Jason's a snitch is because he's on federal paper out on 
federal parole and he's doing illegal activities and he keeps walking away, even though on paper it says that Jason was supposed to do 11 months and somehow he went to court and just left. Sounds like a snitch. It's called a self-surrender. Jason is only allowed in my home if he is sober. And what you don't see is how much fun he is to be around. What you don't perpetuate on these drama channels is that he has been in my life since 2011. He has been in my life since 2011. I'm supposed to turn my back on him because he relapsed? He is flawed. He does struggle. He has, he's got a lot of work to do too, but he is not allowed in my home around my children unless he is sober. And to call him Uncle Fester pisses me the fuck off. At the end of the day, he loves and cares about us. He is protective, sober, and needs to take his medication. Because, you know, they have arm floaties now. And if you just take your arm floaties, you can go wherever the hell you want. Okay. And I know this sounds very defensive, and I told you all last week on TikTok, I'm not, that, I'm not there yet. I feel as though I'm being pushed um, into filming content that I'm not ready to film because I'm not filming from a place of... I'm not healed yet. I'm defensive. I'm frustrated. I'm tired. And that's, that's the message that's going to come out because it's still so fresh. All the other things that I've shared with you guys, that's a decade old. I've healed mostly from those things. If these women were not victim blaming, they wouldn't constantly say that we abuse each other. We're toxic together. We're two toxic people. We want to hear his side because she's oversharing and she's loud. He's quiet. He's quiet on social media. He's not quiet to y'all. He's not quiet behind the scenes. Mutual abuse is not real. There's abuse and then there is reactive abuse. Not all domestic violence survivors or narcissistic abuse survivors react the same. Having said that, my actions are not his fault. And I reacted badly to a lot of situations and I saw a version of myself that I never want to see again, that I want to completely heal from. I want that bitch you know what I mean? A lot of the things that happened last year brought out the ugliest version of me. And I've made a lot of mistakes then and even after I left. But I'm not this perfect little angel. I have reacted badly. Not all victims of domestic violence are scared 24-7. It's not how, that's not how it works. What I saw last year was that I have to let go of material possessions and the vision that I had for my life. And I have to heal all of these things. And I have a lot of work to do on myself. And my bad reaction to what he was doing is not his fault. It's not his fault. This has been such an eye-opening experience, just sharing the little bit that I have, because unfortunately, I'm seeing a lot of women downplay or try to justify abuse, or they, they can only, from my opinion, from what I've seen, they can only look at it from their eyes, from their lived experience. And I feel as though they're having a hard time looking at it through my eyes, putting themselves in my shoes with all of my past traumas, all of the things that I've gone through. And that's not to excuse away my bad behavior and the mistakes that I have made, but your experience is your experience and your truth. And mine is mine. And we're different people. I think we all need to take a step back and just look at the damage that we are all causing. And I have been part of that too. But it is an undeniable fact that what these people are doing online is just further compounding my abuse. That's not to say that I am fucking perfect. It's not, but this has just gone too far. It's gone so far. I mean, people are literally being messaged and harassed and called to see if I was bullied in high school. And if I showed up to take a picture at a book club or some shit, then I must have been popular. Um, you, you don't know my story better than I know my story. But the reason why it's compounding the abuse is because I feel like I have to find every single thing. I have to find my, my student loan documents to prove that I actually have a bachelor's degree. I have paperwork from the US Department of Education. I have to pay back a federal loan, or do we now? I don't know, that keeps changing. Um, Regardless, I feel like I have to dig out every single receipt to prove that I'm not lying. That is the exact same thing that I just got out of dealing with with my ex. I just ran around my house for 20 minutes, like looking through boxes and papers and all this stuff to find a piece of paper that says that when I was in prison and they sent me back to uh, Sebastian County Jail, I filed a motion to get the money back that the cops, or not the cops, the COs took from me in intake. I wasn't going to get the money back out of the car, but I had like $300, I think it was. 
yeah, I had $300 on my person and I filed a motion to get that back. They transferred me back to court. I signed for it. Then I went back to prison. That is called a writ, return to testify, which means that anytime, I didn't testify. It means anytime a inmate from prison is sent to a county jail for anything, they're writ. And there's a bunch of different statues in that. There's a bunch of different rules and all of that. I didn't testify to anybody. I went back to sign for a thing. It's stupid that it's worded that way, but that's the way that it's written. So I literally just started like having a fucking panic attack trying to find that paper. And it's crazy because I know I don't have to prove anything to anyone, but I feel like I do. Like, I feel like I do. And because of the relationship I got out of recently, I felt like I had to prove every single little thing. I had to have receipts on top of receipts. It's like Machine Gun Kelly, dude's got tattoos on top of his tattoos. That's what I felt like I had to do just to get my ex to tell me the truth. And guess what? He very rarely did. And it's just, like I feel like my brain is going to explode. It is my hope that the women that I've mentioned in this video will just take a step back and realize that this is victim blaming, that this is compounding my abuse, and that picking apart my story to the point where I'm being told I wasn't even bullied in school is just unbelievably cruel. I also want to apologize to the role that I've played in all of this drama and mess. It's just so loud. And when I had my friends and family, you know, texting me and calling me and sending me screenshots of them being harassed and people from the internet calling them names and being nasty, um, calling their jobs, it just, I'm so stressed out. You know, I am so fucking stressed out and none of these people deserve that. But I get this video up for you guys. I have been working on it for like four or five days. <laughs> um, why four or five days? Jessica, what the hell is going on? It's just me. I'm the whole team. This has been a very long rambly video. Um, I'm going to end it with this be a little more kind to people on the internet because this is actually really hard. If you don't like somebody's content, don't watch them because hate watching is just not healthy, dude. Just if you don't like me, don't watch me. And I will not hold any grudges. No harm, no foul. No harm, no foul. We all have different likes and preferences, just different strokes. You know what I mean? So if you don't like me or my content, just don't watch it. Problem solved. If you're struggling in active addiction, I'm a partner with Groups Recover. I always talk about them. They believe in harm reduction. They believe putting your life back together in a holistic way and not just removing the substance. You get free group therapy sessions for life. As always, I love you guys. Stay safe. Stay sober. Whatever the hell that looks like to you. And I'll see you in my next one.